Hello guys and welcome to today's team analysis video with me Coach Reese. How are you all doing? So the team we're going to take a look at today is Carlo Ancelotti's AC Milan team and we're going to focus around the team that won the 2006-2007 Champions League. Carlo Ancelotti is a manager who I've had a lot of admiration for. Ever since I read his book A Quiet Leadership, if you haven't read it it's definitely worth a read. It's one of the best football books I've ever read. It really gives a good insight into how Carlo Ancelotti manages people, not just his tactics, but how he manages a lot of the high profile players that he's worked with, players like Ibrahimovic and Ronaldo. It really is an excellent read. But quickly, before we do get started, I just want to say a huge thank you for all the recent support on the channel. Having some great discussions in the comments section of nearly all the videos which is really great and I've received some really great feedback which is really helping and I'm hoping to utilize that as I improve the quality of the videos in the future so it is a huge thank you from me and if you do enjoy remember just hit that subscribe button and if you think I've missed anything off this video just drop it in the comments section let's have a chat about it so let's get started so this AC Milan team of Carlo Ancelotti is a really interesting team because it's one of the first times we see Carlo Ancelotti utilise his Christmas tree formation, which is essentially a 4-3-2-1. And it really offers some interesting elements tactically, and we're going to explore those in today's video. And probably one of Carlo Ancelotti's main motivations for using the Christmas tree formation is within this team AC Milan, he had a lot of fantastic players who all played in similar positions. And he needed a formation and a system that allowed all these players to play in the same team. So this is where his Christmas tree formation came from. So how did it look? So the defensive unit of this AC Milan team looked pretty much like any back four would. With a goalkeeper, two centre-backs and two full-backs. And it looked pretty much like this. The full-backs did rotate a lot but we'll use these two just as our reference for going forward they did play a large amount of the games across the season so now we move into the midfield unit and the midfield unit consisted of two lines an initial line of three with essentially three central midfield players and then a line in front of that which had two attacking midfield players and then the final line which is your attacking unit which had one striker so let's take a look at some of the tactics involved with this formation. So when you see the formation laid out on paper in its 4-3-2-1, you instantly notice that there's a severe lack of width within the team, just because there's no, no Y players. So maintaining the width and creating the width in the team was heavily reliant on the fullbacks. So in this AC Milan team, we saw both fullbacks advancing a lot and they would join essentially the attacking unit and what we would see as these fullbacks progressed forward up the pitch is we would this is our first opportunity to see the excellent passing range of the deep line playmaker in Andre Pirlo so when Pirlo received the ball he would often try and play a long diagonal ball into either advancing fullback who could then play into one of the two attacking midfield players or try and put a cross in and this meant that the fullbacks had to be extremely good athletes because the entire width of the team was reliant on them as the fullbacks advanced especially on the right side with the right back what we would see is we would see Gattuso just move towards the space that the fullbacks now left just so that the team could maintain a bit of balance so either move into a back four if the left back hasn't gone or just into a back three if the left back's gone as well. When building attacks, as we would expect, a lot of AC Milan's football went through Pirlo. Pirlo, during this time at AC Milan, had really made this deep line playmaker role his own and he was outstanding. Pirlo could play every pass in the book, so if it wasn't a pass into the full backs who were advancing, it would be a pass into an attacking midfield player, so into Kaka. To say that all Milan's possession went through Pirlo would be doing a little bit of a disservice to Ambrosini and Gattuso, who also played in that midfield line of three. 
as we would expect, both players didn't have the passing range of Pirlo, so they didn't play those long diagonals or those killer balls into Kaká that we saw Pirlo play. But what we did see with these two, especially Gattuso, is he would support the right back and right centre back with shorter passes across a shorter distance to combine and play out against the opposition's front line. So now let's just take a little bit of a focus on Kaká between the lines because this was a strategy that AC Milan really tried to utilise. As you would expect, Kaká was one of the best players of the time and he finished top scorer in that season's Champions League. So you would expect that AC Milan would try and get him on the ball. So what we would find is, as we mentioned, the central area would be quite congested because of AC Milan's two attacking midfield players. So to free up that space for Kaká to operate in centrally, Serdov did move left slightly. This also allowed him to support Ambrosini in the left back as the ball progressed forward if it did need to be combined that way. So it wasn't a huge loss. And once Kaká was free centrally, this is when we would see Pirlo really excel with his passing range and really play that pass that would break the line of the opposition's midfield to free Kaká up in the space that you would expect a 10 to operate in. Once Kaka received the ball in here, we would often see Kaka turn, dribble at a centre-back 1v1, maybe take a shot, or even slip the striker in who could score. Kaka was vital to this team, and it was vitally important that AC Milan got Kaka on the ball in these dangerous areas. Throughout the season, one of the key positions that Ancelotti rotated a lot was the striker. So AC Milan had a choice between Inzaghi or Giladino. When we saw Inzaghi play, Inzaghi was a much more technical player. So AC Milan were able to combine better when they played. But this wasn't always the case. If a team stifled um, AC Milan's possession and they weren't able to progress, AC Milan needed a different option. And this is where Giladino came in. Giladino was a little bit more physical and he was able to hold the ball up better and just be a slightly different option to Inzaghi. And Giladino actually outscored Inzaghi in this season, so depends what AC Milan needed at the time. So when Giladino played, we would see AC Milan be a slightly more direct and try and play into Giladino, who could hold the ball up for then Kaka to receive in that space. Or we would see AC Milan utilise the fullbacks playing wide who could then cross the ball into Giliardino. So throughout this season, AC Milan had multiple options in how they played in possession, and it's probably why they were so successful in the Champions League. When out of possession, Milan's behaviour was very reflective of teams at that time. So we wouldn't necessarily see a super aggressive press, but what we would see is Milan moving to a mid-block 4-4-2, with Serdorf moving left, Gattuso moving to the right, and then Kaka and whoever the striker was making up the two or Kaka would sit behind. So it looked like a 4-4-1-1 or a 4-4-2. Once the mid-block had been established and the opposition started to progress, we would see AC Milan drop into a 4-4-2 deep block and they would try and force the opposition wide. When you've got the goalkeeper and the centre-backs that Milan had in this team, absolute Rolls-Royce of goalkeepers and defenders they were more than happy to deal with crosses against many strikers because they were actually two of the best centre halves of the time another thing we would see as AC Milan moved in towards a deep block is we would see Ambrosini just dropping slightly behind Pirlo this was just so that AC Milan had a player between the lines so they could essentially stop any opposition player receiving it between the lines this just happens because of the presence of a player because the space is so limited in there already from the deep block if you move a player into that area opposition teams are just not going to play into that area it's it's a it's a if they do play into that area excellent they're probably going to get a decent chance but the chance of the pass being successful and coming off is just so slim so this again just forced opposition into wide areas where there was more space so that's an overview of Carlo Ancelotti's Christmas tree formation that brought AC Milan the 2006-2007 Champions League. This team did struggle in the league, but they were incredibly successful in Europe.
So thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. I hope you've enjoyed. Again, a huge thank you for all the support on the channel and all the feedback that I've been given. I'm really trying to improve the quality of the videos and I hope this is the first step. If you did enjoy, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I've been Coach Reese, and I will see you in the next one.